Beauty. What's up, everyone? It is your girl, GL Beauty 87 here, aka Grace. I hope you brought a drink, a snack, a full blown meal for this video. Because y'all know I try a million eyeshadow palettes. So, the million eyeshadow palettes to talk about in this video. Because I have liked quite a few this year and I have used quite a few. I even got a whole separate box just for honorable mentions because these products are good. It's just more of I have me been able to give them this much love and attention i would like to because i have to try so many things i got new palettes on my eyes right now that's a holiday collection the lethal holiday collection finally arrived at my doorstep yesterday so i filmed it today you all will see that um i think tuesday because i got like three collabs coming back to back to back today so i got one with dr ash on her makeup and um kara or beauty and the Freers here on youtube today and then i got one with Erica Conger tomorrow <laughs> and then I got one with my girl of course me I love makeup come Monday so y'all gonna be collabed out and then we gonna turn around and do this holiday thing which FYI this is one of the honorable mentions so I guess I'll start off with this one since it's the one that's on my eyeballs I'm looking at right now bro we have the Lethal Cosmetics Collection so this is the Metamorphosis palette sorry they back for she's I got the Metamorphosis palette here and then the evergreen palette here. Now, obviously, I've only tried these palettes literally today. But since I'm used to using lethal products and their formula has not changed, I feel confident putting them in here. But they're an honorable mention in here because I literally just put them on my eyeballs today. So, this is the Metamorphosis palette. As y'all know, this one isn't my particular personal favorite. But I liked it more than I thought I was going to. With the unique colors they put in here. I like this orange and this red. And this unique shifting, like, um corally orange type pink shade and this shade right here so i feel like the top part is more for you to use in the spring and summertime and i feel like the bottom part is more for the fall and winter because it has the most fiery grungy tones and it has like lovely dual chromes in here so i love lisa cosmetics and i am glad that's why i just went ahead about both of them for my collection because i knew i was gonna like them both here's the evergreen this is the one that's on this eye this is the one i feel like you as soon as you see it you know yes this is definitely great this is me in a palette to me this is like a more grungier winter time appropriate or like you know fall winter time appropriate version of the one up palette which is fy in this video as well y'all know i love me a lethal moment so there's a couple of lethal palettes up in here but yeah this is the one that's on my eye today right here and i think she's absolutely stunning and gorgeous so it had to be in this video just because it's like i knew the quality was great i know the color stories are gonna be bomb i know they have wonderful branding and this formula hasn't changed i didn't want to like formally put it in here because i just tried to stay but it's like i had to put it in here as something so it got to be an honorable mention so these other palettes i've had for a little while or i just haven't been able to use them as much as i would like so i don't want to like just full-on blown like Put them in just the regular category which is just a box full of the regular category by the way so like i said i hope you brought a sex since i was not playing so i'm gonna start off with the claws palette from menagerie cosmetics um i received this one in pr because i only bought the paws but this was in my box as well along with my um killer pearl palette so i actually really like this one i like this one better than the paws palette believe it or not and the funny thing is this was the one i had no intention on getting but i love the uniqueness of this color story i love the look i got out of it however i have only used it one time since that video because i had to constantly try holiday palettes so i did want to put it in here as good quality and a gorgeous palette you know menagerie has wonderful quality and they have gorgeous shimmers and mattes so i wanted to put it in here as a honorable mention because i do like it and I did like it enough to use it more in the future. It's just more of I don't have time to try out every single thing and use everything pretty consistently. So the stuff I have really used consistently more is obviously in the um, the box of just my favorites of 2022. So next one I have is the Aura Palette. I've only used this twice again, which is why it's in the honorable mention category. But this color story is actually stunning and gorgeous. I didn't expect to like this color story as much as I did. Of course, I expected to like the Envy one palette, uh, Envy better. But I like the color story of this. I don't know. It's something about these greens that gets pulled in with these um plummyish red tone shades that really makes me like it along with the purples i got gorgeous looks out of it both times i used it because i did a battle with this against the palette because it has a lot of similar colors fyi palette is in the best of because i've used that palette quite a lot this year so you'll be seeing her coming soon but i really like this one a lot and i wanted to put it in here but again since i've only used it those two times for the video i haven't been able to just use it on its own it had to be more of a, on the honorable mention side so all these things I'm talking about, I like them. I think the quality of them is great. It's just because I haven't used them consistently. I can't say they're the best of 2022. I can give them their honorable mentions because they came out in 2022. And that's what we're doing with this first box. Because like I said, it's two boxes, girl. Like, I'm going to be here till like at least 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Just doing all this. Let me not put the um, palettes on top of my phone because my alarm's going to go off in like about three, four minutes. And I don't want it. And since my watch is just about dead, I can't be doing it. Next, I have the Thunder Palette from Colored Rain Cosmetics. 
I love the color story of this. If you did not get a chance to get your hands on Blueberry Muffin, I feel like this is a good alternative for you. And since Color Rain is always having a deal or a sale, like I think during Black Friday, you get this for $15. And I believe this is a $25 palette. And then I think they'll let you use an influencer clothes on top of it. So you could have got this palette for like $13. Bucks, and since I think that's around the same price as the BH Cosmetics one, I definitely think it's something you should check into if you can't find it at your local TJ Maxx and um, Marshalls. But this is the good quality. This isn't the quality of the Juicy Boost palette that got everybody to, just, I feel like, not take as much interest to the brand because they changed the formula this is a good formula this is that new improved formula that they made after juicy boost went bust so i would recommend it if you like monochromatic colors or if you like the um like i said the bh cosmetics palette and you know you can't really use on camera too much anymore because they're not bringing that one back with the new relaunch you still have a color story that you like that you can use so that's why i'm putting it in next i have the house of l palette from adept cosmetics i didn't get to use this much over the summer i got to use like two or three times but i know the shimmers in adept are just 100 percent um the matte senior i liked okay it's just like i don't necessarily know that they work best for my skin tone or for this palette in general but i did like it enough to put it in here because the one thing adept is going to give you is wonderful shimmers like and i have so many palettes to like even if the uh, mattes i don't feel like work perfectly for me i just think of adept as like shimmer palettes with that might have a couple of mattes in them and i usually just reach for other matte palettes like i can use my blend bunny palettes i can use my color rain vivid shadows and pigments palette i can use the uh a lot of other different palettes to pair with their shimmers that i know they're always going to work so that's why this got to be put in there because i do like the shimmers in here i didn't get to use it that often though like i said because i have so many palettes i've used but you know that's okay Next, I have the Pat McGrath at Bridgerton Collection. So I have, um, what is this? I think this is Diamond of the First Water or something like that. Is that the name of it? Yeah, Diamond of the First Water and then Belle of the Ball. So these two are um, the ones that came out this year. There was a blush set that came out with each one of them. I don't like the blush set that came out with this one. So that was my worst of 2022. Spoiler alert. And it's not the blushes I don't like. It's literally just the container they came in. It just pissed me off so much. But this is Diamond the First Water and Belle of the Ball. Both of these are really nice. I've used um, Diamond the First Water more than Belle of the Ball for obvious reasons. I mean, it's mauves and blues. Like, uh, those are my color sex when it comes to more neutral things. So this one I have used more than this one. I think I've only used this one like once for the video. I used this one at least two or three times off camera. So that's why it's being put in here. It's just, you know, like Compared to some other Pat McGrath things you're going to see in this video, I feel like this one is just, you know, these are just okay compared to that. So, that's why they're honorable mentions. Oh God, don't tell me I'm bad about to die again. See, I told you the alarm's going to go off at like 10. I have one set for 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock. I'm hoping the 12 o'clock one don't go off and I'm still sitting here talking because then, child, I will be depressed. Um, next, I have the Glam Light and Frosted Flakes palette. This is an honorable mission to me because I've only used it twice. And y'all got to remember, this wasn't necessarily my color story or color aesthetic. Y'all know the majority is blue and that's what I love. But I wasn't really big on the oranges. I'm not necessarily excited about this black shimmery shade. The quality on this is amazing, though, which is why I got to be an honorable mission. And I've only used it like a couple of times because, again, I have so many palettes and there's so many other palettes that came out that i liked more that had color stories that i knew i would reach for more than this but since the quality on this was so great and i did use it a couple of times i wanted to go ahead and give it an honorable mention next one this um this palette is actually reason i bought the frosted flakes one because i wanted to compare it to the end of springs palette now this, to me this one is an honorable mention and i don't know if this is cheating or not i mean it probably is the most people because i like y'all know i switch around shades and color pop palettes so i switched around some of the shades in this one because i wasn't really feeling the color story of it on its own or necessarily the form of all the shades in it on its own but this year and the last couple years i feel like some color pop um mattes have been pressed harder than other ones so um i had to switch it around to make it work for me so um i took a couple of shades from a couple of other palettes like i took this green and added it here i think i added this shade don't quote me and then um i think that's pretty much it i think i only added this shade and this shade because i feel like um the rest of these were already in here so i don't know if you can consider that cheating or not but it's like i liked it once i changed the color story in it and you all like the eye look i did with it so you liked it too it's just i switched around the extra I mean, I switched around a shade. I don't remember which one it was in order to make the palette more of my aesthetic. So, it's an honorable mention because once I changed it, I liked it. It's just, initially, I wasn't that big a fan of it. But since I changed it around, I figured I could add it as an honorable mention. If you don't agree, that's fine. You know, it's already here. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. Next, I have the Sigma and Alice in Wonderland. If you all know, then you know Alice in Wonderland is actually one of my all-time favorite Disney movies. So I was excited that they came out with a palette just for Alice in Wonderland. Now, I have not used this palette that much just because, again, 
the moral of the story, I had so many palettes to choose from and so many palettes to use. So it's like I didn't get to use as much as I'd like to. But I do like the color story on this. I like the warm tone, the cool tone, the aesthetic that they have going on. I feel like a lot of brands do that, but I love the way they curate it and did this. I feel like it does feel pretty true to Alice in Wonderland. I mean, I'd like to have a little less neutrals, but I understand why. Because you wanted it to be more of an everyday wearable palette for people to use. Especially because the price point, I feel like, on these went up because it was a Disney collab. So I'm getting why they did what they did, but you know. I liked it well enough to include it in here because I do like the color store and I do like the Sigma's formula. It was just more of, I didn't reach for this one as much as I reached for some other ones that they came out with that you'll see in this video later. Next, I have the Sorcerer palette from um, Linda, um, sorry, Lisa Eldridge. I always want to make Lisa Eldridge Linda Hallberg. I don't know why. I guess because this is her first time making eyeshadows and I'm so used to her not doing that. So I think of Linda Hallberg because she does lots of eyeshadows. Anyway, this palette is absolutely stunning. I only got to use it for the video that I made it in though. But the shimmers left such an impact on me that I felt like I wanted to put in this video. This one matte is okay. It's not exceptional or crazy. But it was better than the mattes that was in the Myth palette. Spoiler alert, the Myth palette is my worst palette of 2022. I just didn't like the formula on those. I felt like it wasn't giving enough of what I needed. A lot of luxury shadows don't, which is why I don't buy a lot of luxury shadows. Even though this is a luxury and high-end makeup channel a lot of luxury eyeshadows just don't do it for me because of the type of eyeshadow I like so anyway this one did it for me the shimmers in here are amazing they give me those um luxury high-end shimmer vibes like Pat McGrath and Natasha and um occasionally Charlotte Gibbs so that's why it got to be an honorable mention in this video because honey the shimmers were popping and they were given and since that's the majority of shimmer palette I like that one so much better than I like the um the myth palette so the next honorable mention I have is the Berries palette. I could have honorable mentioned all of these palettes, but this is the one that stuck out to me the most, oddly enough, because you got to think I played so much with blues and greens. So it's like this one was more of an exciting one for me just because I don't have, I don't feel like I have that many berry toned or reddish toned palettes. So that's why I want to include this in my honorable mentions because this was the one I did reach for the most out of those three because with the other ones I already have the palettes that they're supposed to be duping for. So I felt like I didn't really need to um, mention those. Plus, I have other palettes that have similar color stories that are coming up in this video. So, this one is my honorable mention from that set. I liked all three of them, but this was the one that stood out to me for the most. I just don't reach for these colors that often, but the form in here is really good if you did want a monochromatic palette with this color sort. So, that's why it's an honorable mention. Okay, girl. We almost done with the honorable mention box. I got four left. Okay, so the Hudson Valley from Nomad Cosmetics, you know, the one I was up here talking about, I wasn't going to get until it went on sale. But I told y'all I was going to get it when it went on sale during the 35% off sale. So, you already knew what this was. Um, I like the format on this. The quality of it's really nice. It's giving me like brighter uh, and duller versions of Zendo because it has the brighter colors on this side that Zendo doesn't have. And it has like more dull, washed out versions of the colors in the Zendo palette. So to me, this is like a more affordable version of the Zendo palette. And I like the um, color story on this side more than in the Zendo palette. But I like the color story on the Zendo palette more than on this side because I feel like these colors are kind of dull. So to me, this is going to be a palette that I would like um, do a palette matchup or a palette combination with the Zendo palette because I I want to use the blues in the Zendo palette and not these shades. And plus the Zendo palette has more shimmers to go with the shades like this. So these could be dust over shades for that. So I think the formula and the quality on this is exceptional. Nomad has um, palettes I have reached for just more in my collection. Like the Whistler Slow Dodge. Now I did forget to bring the Whistler Slow Dodge. But that is one I wanted to include in this video. So that's why I'm mentioning it now. And when I show the rest of the Nomad palettes I'm going to show in this video. I will mention it again to remind you. It's just I don't have the palette here with me. Because foolishly I took it back instead of leaving it here. I knew I was supposed to leave it here. But like a dummy for some reason. Because I had to pull so much stuff out. I forgot and left it behind. Anyway next I have the Muppets and Colourpop. Ho Ho Ho. Sorry Holiday Holiday Holidays Collection. I don't know why I was going to say Ho Ho Ho. I guess because um. I think it's a whole, whole Merry Christmas when you have to say that. Um, anyway, this is what the inside of the palette looks like. The reason this one is an honorable mention as opposed to a regular, obviously, is because of this pressed glitter-ish type formula shades that they have in here and the fact that there's so many of them. Because it's like three of them in here. Now, um, according to... Um, Angelica Nicholas here on YouTube. She gets PR from them and she's saying like this is their new like wannabe version of like a pressed glitterish type thing because it doesn't feel as gritty as the original pressed glitters they had which was what I was thinking and what I said in my video but since she gets PR from them I wanted to update y'all on that. She was saying it's like their wannabe pressed glitterish formula that they came out with that's um, a little bit smoother and nicer on the lids than the original shade so I was um, happy that I wasn't going crazy because at first I was like hold on wait what? So, um, I like the palette, but it got knocked down to honorable mention just because of that. Plus, I only used it, I think, one other time after that video. Or I might have just used it for that video, and that's it, to be perfectly honest. I honestly don't remember. But I know I liked the quality on that. And since y'all know ColourPop has a lot of hit and miss stuff going on, I wanted to make sure that I pointed out that that was definitely a hit. 
especially because it's on the higher price and it's like 26 bucks so next i have the sugar drizzle matte the matte pressed pigment palette so um i literally just got this when i got the sugar drizzle hypernova palette i was waiting for it to go on sale because i knew i didn't like sugar drizzles mattes from the past and past palettes i tried they had gotten better in palettes i had tried recently so that's why i was willing to take a risk on this palette right here this is I told y'all the name is already, but this is a purple lover's dream. But my personal opinion, if you don't want to spend the money on the ABH Norvina palette, because that's like 60 bucks, this one I think is in the 40s, and you get a much wider range of purple. So if you're a purple lover like I am, I would definitely recommend you pick up this palette. The purples I tried in it is nice, but the only thing is I've only tried like two, three purples in here. So I didn't want to recommend this palette as a whole as like, yes, go get it. Um... This is one of the best palettes of 2022, even though I don't think this even came out in 2022. I think this might have came out in 21. Don't quote me. Um, but um, I like the formula of it. I think um, it's pretty nice from what I tried. I tried this shade right here, this shade right here, and this shade right here. So I've only tried three out of all the purples in here, and I haven't tried the blues at all. That's why she's an honorable mention. But I definitely think, like, in six months, I'll probably still be using this palette just because it has so many wide ranges of purples in it. And it's a great alternative to that higher-end ABH palette that um has come out speaking of which i'm going to the corner with the abh palette because i gotta do a battle of us so the last one i have to talk about believe it or not you're probably gonna be shocked that i own this palette at all but you'll be seeing it in future videos coming in 2023 so this is the tart um man eater after dark palette i ended up getting this because my girl karen harris here on youtube was talking about how the formula for basic um b palette as she likes to call them was really nice and she said it was better than the formula they used to have sorry i'm putting i'm multitasking like i always do but she said the formula was much better than the original formula that they had going on so i was like okay okay well you know since you're saying that let me go ahead and you know try it out when it goes on sale so y'all know me when it goes on sale i'll buy the palette or i'll do whatever it is with the palette when it's on sale it's just when it's not on sale i'm not paying regular price i just i can't justify it in my mind i can't in my life i just can't do it so when this went on sale on Alta's website i think it was 30 percent off during one of their holiday haul weeks or whatever i went ahead and snatched it up y'all saw it in my black friday haul I, was, I think i was waiting in the black friday haul or i wore it sometime after that but this is what she looks like on the inside to me this is just a giant version of the charlotte tillaberry smoky eyes and forever palette that has better um transition shades and colors for some of my skin tone so that's why i prefer this one over that one i did a whole video on it in the new series i'm starting in 2023 so you have to wait and see what's going on with the new series i have about two or three new series coming to you in 2023 so i hope you're excited because i've been working hard girl like i sat up literally four in the morning like a couple of days ago from like when i got off work at i think 10 o'clock and i was up to four in the morning just filming eyeshadow videos just for that series so i'm hoping you all will enjoy it but yeah the quality on this is actually really good and since i hadn't tried a tart palette in forever and it finally had some decent quality i just definitely want to go ahead and shout it out now let's get into these regular palettes the girl that box is even bigger than the other box oh you guys so heavy and i feel so very weak and small so we're gonna start off with some affordable ones and then i'm going to some like more high-end ones and just like a mixture of whatever i feel like grabbing at the box girl because it's so much in the box it's just sitting here till it's like child Anyway, we're going to start with Beauty Bay. So I got these two Beauty Bay palettes that I tried this year that I was really exceptionally excited about. Besides the honorable mention one, which was the Bears. This is the new mod. If you like the, um, do you want some milk palette from Made by Mitchell? I feel like this would be a good alternative for you. And since the formula on that is kind of wonky, I know Annette's Makeup Corner said she didn't like it that much. I liked it okay. It wasn't as good as the original first two palettes he came out with, with Head in the Clouds, Feet on the Ground. And um, his latest palette, the um, Wear the Mangoes palette, I put that in my worst palettes of 2022. I was not impressed with it at all. So needless to say, I don't think I'm going to buy any more of his eyeshadow palettes unless, you know, like they're, um, unless I hear good reviews from quite a few people because I wasn't impressed. But I feel like this would be a good alternative for you if you're looking at that Do You Want Some Milk palette. I know he does a box sale every year where it's like, you know, get 50% off. But I feel like this one at regular price would still be worth it over his palette. This palette is stunning. It's wonderful quality and I definitely think you should check it out. Especially if you like weird and unique color stories like this. Because to me, this is like a warm tone, cool tone like situation going on with some fun pops of color that I really like. I actually recreated this in the smaller version in a um in the on the list ColourPop palette that you'll see coming soon because i showed y'all i did a ColourPop collection video where i just showed you different ColourPop palettes in my collection and i ended with the ones that i recreated so i feel like that'll be something fun for you all to see i'm trying to do a few limited edition series too not just the regular ones and then i'm gonna kill off some other series that i feel like aren't doing as well as they used to anyway next dark fantasy this is their holiday palette from 2020 
too. And y'all know I'm all about these types of colors. Like, I like the fact that they included this berry to go with this nice little purple section here. And then you got a lot of these, like, greens and some blues. They love greens and blues and purples just like I do. So I was happy to see that they did a green, bluish, purple type palette. And they always find a way to bring in some, like, grungy or cooler neutrals to add to the collections for you to have transition shades and things like that. So I can appreciate that from the brand so i really like this palette as a whole and i'm glad to have it in my collection so those are the two beauty bay palettes i had to talk about um, let me see. next we're gonna get into my um glaminatrix cosmetics so i only have a couple of glaminatrix cosmetics palettes to talk about i have the nearly natural and the um nocturnal palette so We'll start with the Nocturnal palette because it's the fun one. Um, I love the colors in this. Like, th this is so grungy and weird and unique. I'm loving how people are coming out with more grungy, unique, fun color stories as opposed to playing it safe. I mean, there are plenty of brands that are still out here playing it safe with these um, boring, neutral color stories, which I'm not mad at them. It's like, you know, a lot of people wear that every day and, you know, like, it might be a splurge for them to... Um, buy some new makeup but they something that they know they can use every day I, it's just i'm not that person that's not my journey so i'm excited to see more people being like me like we're gonna put out these fun color stories we're gonna put out these fun grungy things and people are gonna be excited about them because i am excited about them so i love this color story i love this palette this is easily one of my favorite palettes from the brand of all time and the first palette i think i ever tried from this brand was the silent night palette anyway great palette next i have the nearly natural palette now i know y'all probably like what are you doing with this boring um neutral palette because the packaging looks boring on the outside this is a neutral palette with a twist which i can appreciate and like because as you can see she has a nice gray she has a nice burgundies in there and this isn't that traditional traditional just brown neutral palette like the empowered palette from huda beauty those are the type of like traditional like everyday boring palettes i don't like you need to give me more mauves and more berries and more like stuff like that if you expect me to wear a neutral palette because i don't go for like or like cool tone those are the type of neutral palettes i go for so that's I could get down with this one because at first I thought she was gonna have a boring neutral palette like everyone else and I was like oh god but she needs to add to her collection so people will buy from the brand and you know like she can round out her collection and all that but once I saw she had a fun one I was like oh okay say less I will buy it and I have thoroughly enjoyed this I have to use this one like two or three times and y'all know it's a big deal if I'm using palettes two or three times but this was a neutral palette I could go to that would still be fun and give some uniqueness to my eye look even if I was in a rush because y'all know me even when I'm in a rush I still want some form of color like I'll put on a neutral palette but I have to put a colorful like pencil on the lower lash line or something like that I can't just have a boring eye look I just can't do it it's not in my spirit if I am I must be extremely tired because there's no way I'm just doing a boring neutral palette let's get some other um palettes out the way so I have a couple of palettes from um Clarity Cosmetics this is the Evil Mermaid and then I have the Lily palette now you haven't seen the Lily palette or the Evil Mermaid on my channel but these were good enough palettes for me to include in here um the thing about this brand is I feel like they're really hit and miss when it comes to a lot of stuff so that's why a lot of times I don't like to review them because it's like one minute I'm telling you it's good the next minute I tell you it's not now I know I do it with other brands too but because they're a very new brand I'm trying for the first time and I'm already seeing inconsistencies I was like I don't want to be keep showing these people and then five minutes is good and then 20 minutes later it's bad so like that's why I haven't really shown it. but this palette was good quality to me and it kind of gave me um a more black girl friendly version of the what is a high tide palette from ColourPop, which are actually discontinued. I think they discontinued this one too, though. That's another thing about the brand. They come up with stuff and then 20 minutes later they be discontinued it too, kind of like Beauty Bay and um, occasionally ColourPop does. Well, actually, frequently ColourPop does, but they bring out so much stuff that looks just like it 20 minutes later, so it doesn't really matter. Um, anyway, next, the Lily palette here. I actually use this one quite a bit. I've done like two or three looks over the, um, the year with this one. And again, since we know I own so much makeup, it's good if I get to do two or three looks with your palette because that shows I took an interest in it. The thing that excited me about this one was the dual chromes in here and the mattes in here actually performed really nice. So that was why I was so happy to get my hands on this palette personally and use it and it worked out really nice for me. So this one and the Eva Mermaid I like and my worst eyeshadow palettes 2022, the Blooms palette was in there. Um, Dr. Ash on Makeup was telling me how the um, shimmers weren't going to work that great in it. And I kept that in mind. But I still wanted to try it. And I, the mattes in that palette are really good. I just don't like the shimmers in there, which is what knocked it down quite a bit. Anyway, let me go get a battery, girl. Because I've been talking so long and we ain't even got through this box yet. And it's about to die. Ciao. Okay, y'all. So we got through the... What was it? Clarity Cosmetics, I believe. Let me see. I'm trying to keep them in groups, like in order, so maybe it won't take as long. But you know, it's not. I'm gonna have that well. So next, we're gonna get to the Lethal Cosmetics, one of my favorite brands. Y'all already saw them in the honorable mention section. I'm wearing on my eyes right now. I mean, how much do I have to say I love Lethal Cosmetics? I I feel like it's already understood. Uh, so I have the Teresa is Lethal palette. Um, this is what. It looks like on the inside, absolutely stunning. This shade Space Trash alone is 
like a reason enough for me to have this palette in my collection but as you can see she has this nice cool tone neutralish roll for you you have this nice pink and purplish roll and then you have this green blue and purple roll because obviously this is a blue to purple shifting shade i think it has a little bit of pink of it as well so i like the color combination of this for the most part when you look at it as like each roll down if you just look at it as a whole or look at it like this and it doesn't look right but if you turn it sideways you can see each roll and how they stand up i have used this palette at least two to three times i used it in combination with her old palette from um i think it was last year she came out with don't call me i'm pretty sure it was last year though so i'm here for it it's a vibe i absolutely love it the next week the palette i have is the one up collection palette i love the color story of this i mean look at me and look at this and say it's not um a function of me i feel like this is a good alternative to the holiday one i have on my eyes right now because it has this nice pink in it but i still feel like it has a lot of shades in it and it's supposed to be reflective to backlight like some of the mattes in here if i remember correctly the mattes are the shimmers i just think this is a stunning palette and i came out the perfect time during the summertime so this is their summer um collection if i remember correctly and i was here for this palette i'm like yes honey give it to me the last one i have to talk about is the night flower palette so of course when you see it you'll know why it's in here let I me mean, look at it it's blue it's green i'm sorry it's blue it's purple I, i'm all about this color story and all about this life it looks absolutely stunning i'm here for it i love it i love it i love this color story as a whole i've used this palette at least two or three times again y'all know it's hard for me to use stuff two and three times but the fact that i use it two or three times i feel like it says everything you need to know this needs to stay here for another video you know like i got so many things i have to stay places for another videos and stuff like that so um next we're going to get into do i have a lot of color pop i think i actually don't have that much color pop in this video this year y'all i had that honorable mention that i only see like two color pop palettes in here so let's get them out the way this is the Star Wars collection. So, um, I'm not a person who's really been into Star Wars. I don't care about Star Wars, but I just thought that these two palettes were like really nice palettes from the collection, so I felt the need to share them. I'm shocked I only have two Colourpop palettes in here. I swear I thought there were going to be more. So here's what the inside of the original palette looks like. The big one that they came out with that everybody was in love with. I did a palette rewind on this. I've used this a couple of times when I didn't have the film, so that says how much I really love and care about this palette. I'm here for it. It's a vibe. I'm actually all about this palette. So, I'm glad to have it in my collection and I used it enough to where I felt like it was a favorite same thing with the dark Vader palette I love the color story in this I feel like this is a good alternative to the people who don't um who didn't get a chance to get the um what is it um the waiting room palette from what do you call them um the waiting room palette for um milk and Beetlejuice I feel like this would be a good alternative for you because, like, don't be paying people a million dollars on Macari for this palette. I, I mean, for that palette, but you could just get this alternative palette. This is only, I think, $12 or something like that. And I feel like the quality of it is really good. It's the good ColourPop quality. It's um, Angelica Nico, it's like to say. So, these are the two ColourPop palettes I had to shout out the most. I'm still shocked I don't have more than two ColourPop palettes. Well, technically, I had three. That one I remade, but I'm like, I feel like I remade this. So, should that really count? I don't know. Anyway, let's do some one-off palettes now, just to get some one-off palettes out of the way. So as far as um, palettes from Natasha Denona, I only have this mini bronze palette, believe it or not. I know you're shocked that a neutral palette made its way in here. But this was one I could easily do a quick look and I need to rush off for work. So what I do is I, um, if I remember correctly, I use this on the outer V. I put like this all over my lid. And then I put um, the bronzy shade in the inner corner and run this one on the lower lash line with an orange pencil in the waterline. I feel like this is a really nice, easy look and quick to do. So that's how it made it in here. Plus, it's, you know, the good Natasha Denona quality at an affordable price point. That's another reason I wanted to point it out. Um, let's do some other ones. I have the Batty Bean and um, Shroud Hollow Bean palette. I actually like this one more than I like the original one. I never thought I'd be saying that. But, like, uh, I find myself reaching for this one more than the original one. I like the colors that she put in here. I feel like you can make unique looks with it. Like, you can go straight down this row and make a nice look. Or you can go catty corner across this way and make a really green and bluish look. I love this shade right here that she picked, Black Flame. I feel like it just looks so stunning and wonderful. It's a really nice, um color in the palette and i just think overall it's a nicely curated color story i've used this quite a few times all things considering so you know i'm happy about having this to my collection and it didn't take a million years to get here like it did the last um, one so 
Despite everyone else saying they don't like this, I love this palette. This is the Super Malls palette. Sorry, Supreme Malls from Artist Couture. Now, I know the shimmers in here are kind of thick and emollient. I didn't have an issue with the mattes being patchy. So, that's why I don't say that like other people have. I, I feel bad for the people who did have a bad time with this palette because I think it's stunning. I think it's great quality. I, my favorite color is Sex Appeal and uh, Obscene. Those are the two shimmers I like in here the most. I like to put this on the outer V, put those two on the lid, and then grab one of these for the inner corner and use this shade to like dust over an airbrush or whatnot. It's, it's a stunning, stunning palette. And y'all know I love me some artist couture, so I was happy to add this to my collection. And then I have the Vanessa Myricks Lightworks Volume 3, the Experience Palette. I love this palette so much more than I like the um, bigger one she came out with. Like, I don't hate that palette to the extent because the shimmers in it are still good. It's just that middle roll that everybody hates, including myself. So I like this one better and put this in the best of video because at the end of the day, it doesn't have those shades in the middle that aren't really useful to me. And the fact that, you know, like, I can get some great dual chrome from a black-owned luxurious brand, if you will, I like it. So much and I'm so happy to have got this one as, as opposed to the big one like everyone else did the first time. I'm so, so glad because I would have been very upset not wanting to buy the second one. Last, last one off palette we're going to do from now is the Lunar Retrograde palette from um, Drench Cosmetics and Neon and UA. So, y'all know this was going to be in here. I love me. I A. Darius is just wonderful. And he gave the girls a pastel palette. So, to me, this is a brown girl friendly version of the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde palette. And Lunar Retrograde. So, I love the color story of this. It's a great um, palette. And Drench has amazing quality. They did a um, palette with Midas Cosmetics before they rebranded a while ago. I bought that palette and I really liked it as well. You all liked the eye look I did with it. So I really love the quality of their product. Unfortunately, you can't get Darius's palette anymore. So if you wanted to get it, you cannot. So I'm mean, like, I'm sad for you because the quality on that is exceptional. If you like pastels and your mind skin tone, I feel like it's excellent for you because, you know, it's harder to find pastels to work on our skin tone. So the fact that I found one that's amazing, honey, yes. Okay, so next I have, y'all know this was going to be in here too, my Patrick Ta Major Dimensions Volume, what is it, Major Dimension 2 Eyeshadow Palette. This is the more rose gold colored one. Wrong side of the palette. I'm opening. So, I like the packaging on this one a whole lot better too because it has a trim around it so it lets you know, you know, which one is which. And then like the color story of this a whole lot better too. I still feel like it's more mid-tone than it should be. However, I do like the fact that um, he got rid of those sequined shades and that weird pressed glitter shade he had in the first one. So he does listen to his consumers, which I appreciate. But I feel like they sent him off when it came to that face palette this year because they were saying it's too deep. But then when he came out with the lighter one, nobody wanted to buy it and nobody was interested in it. So I was like, I feel like they set him up on that one. So maybe just stick to the like deeper tones the next time because that's the one that's old for you. I'm just saying, but... This eyeshadow palette is great, and I like that you took the feedback about the first one and how people didn't like the fact that it, um, you know, uh, had those secret shades in it, so he handled that accordingly. So let's get into some Nomad Cosmetics. So I have these three Nomad Cosmetics from, um, well, duh, I have these three Nomad Cosmetics palettes. So I have the Providence one, I have the Paradise Islands, and then I have, I forgot the name of this one, um, the Cloud Forest Preserve, um, palette, or the Costa Rica palette. So... I like the color story of this one. I knew it reminded me of another palette. It reminds me of the Dominique Cosmetics Lemonade palette. Because I knew in the back of my mind, I was like, it looks similar to something I have. It's a Lemonade palette from Dominique Cosmetics around the side though. So if you have that palette, you might not want to go ahead and get this one. Although I feel like the shimmers in here are much better. And I love this color story a little bit better than hers. But hers are always made to put on your face and um, as well as your eyes. So you have to keep that in mind when you do buy her palettes. They're made for like all over. Anyway. At least the old ones are. I don't know necessarily about the new ones. I feel like the new ones might not still be made for that. Don't quote me though. Anyway, the color story of this is simply stunning. I love the uniqueness of these grays and purples and how nicely they look together. I like this little orange row in the middle. I feel like it's a nice good transition into um, these shades because you can use this as a nice transitioning set for the summer. And then I feel like when you go into the fall, you would use these tones out here. But you can still use the yellows as a pop of colors to go with the dark grunge. So 
to me this color story is beautiful i've used this palette at least two or three times because i really really like the color story on it and the formula of it is better than my dominique cosmetics because they reformulated and sent out all the ones that came from their warehouse but the ones that they sent to sephora they didn't fix those i bought mine from sephora so um my shape my shimmers are still pressed too hard and some of my mattes are still pressed too hard so mine isn't that great of quality so i'm happy to have this color story and this one in my collection next Paradise Islands. I remember telling y'all like I didn't plan on using this that much because it's a more mid-tone one, but it goes perfectly hand in hand with the Costa Rica palette, which is why I ended up using it. Plus, when I needed extra tones for certain palettes, I already had this one out to test, and I would end up using it. So I really like the quality of it, and I really like the color story of it. I initially wish that they had better tones, but it ended up working out in my favor because I just used the Costa Rica palette when I want stuff like that to happen. So here is what it looks like. Y'all know this was gonna be in here. This color story is a dream. I love this unique um shimmer shade right here it has a nice green to pink shift to it which i think is so unique and cool and fun um but i'm really a fan of um this palette the most but i feel like it pairs amazingly well with the paradise islands because as you can see the stuff that's missing in the paradise islands i can get in the um costa rica palette so these are just a match made in heaven that might be why they did it the way they did it because they knew they had this one coming out and you could just pair it with that one so either way i'm here for it and love it i thank you so much now let's get into some more groups together palettes. So I got a few from Blend Bunny Cosmetics. So they started off the year strong with this Dollhouse palette. This is her version of a neutral palette. As you can see, it has lots of dark grungier shades in between. And then it has like different rolls that you can use as more neutral appropriate as opposed to the traditional neutral palette. If y'all haven't noticed, I'm not really into neutrals. We walking around with all this color on. I'm more of a colorful girl. So when I do have a neutral palette, it needs to be like this, more of like having colorful tones in it, but still like pops of neutral for people who like neutrals. But it doesn't need to be a traditional neutral palette because I'm less likely to reach for it, want to buy it, or want to have any interest in it unless I'm literally doing it for my channel. And then I probably want to return it to Sephora after the fact. And you can't buy this from Sephora. So it's like it needs to have some unique quality to it that makes me want to be bothered with it. And this definitely does. It has like the blues and some nice purples. It has the nice little pink mauve tones I like. It has more of the cool tone vibes to it. It has like this orangey-ish instead of a traditional brown set of tones. So I feel like all the tones in here are pretty unique. To me, this is more neutral. This was the more cool tone one. And it has lots of different tones that are considered more, I guess, neutral S, but not actually a neutral palette. So I can appreciate that, which is why I love this palette. I used this at least two or three times this year. And again, y'all know with as much makeup I have, it's a big deal when I use something two or three times, which is why it got to be in this video. Next, we have the Glen Bunny Cosmetics Primal Palette. Um, this is just supposed to be an extension of the original blends palette for shades that were missing in it. Like, obviously, the black and the white for girls who do like, lots of Instagram makeup. I don't do a lot of Instagram makeup. I mean, I do crazy colors in everyday life, but it's like I don't sit up for hours and get to, like, do Instagram makeup the way they do. I mean, one day I think it'd be cool to try to do that once my skill set gets better. But, you know, right now we just in, like, you know, I guess, um in a different place so i'm not good with that but i do like the tones that she chose for this one and i do feel like they're unique to what's already in her blends palette because that was my concern that it wasn't going to be the same and then she has these lovely jewel tone shimmers to go in it and if y'all remember the original blends palette doesn't have any shimmers in it whatsoever so i like the fact she incorporated shimmers in this one as opposed to just giving us more just colorful mattes and nothing else so this was nice. I actually paired this with the eight, um, the All I Ever Wanted Volume 2 from Earthly Cosmetics. You'll see that in this video as well. But the last one I have to talk about from Blend Bunny is the All Done Up palette. This is her holiday collection. And I like the fact that she did something unique. To me, these are more grungier, deeper neutral tones that I feel like I haven't seen from her personally. I mean, like, this row of stuff, of course, yes. But I'm talking about as a whole with the tones she chose. I feel like this is perfect for fall, winter, the time that she chose to put it in. And I'm absolutely loving this palette i have used this one two or three times as well so if you haven't noticed all the stuff that i'm talking about in this video for the most part has been used two or three times and you know they're really things that i cherished and loved which is why i put them in this video and okay, let me move this set of palettes so i can get to the next set of palettes i'm telling y'all like it's literally gonna be like two boxes of palettes and then i gotta take the christmas tree home along with all this stuff like the one i'm about to be packed i'm glad i drive an suv because honey another cluster of palettes I've, i got a few unearthly palettes we need to talk about of course y'all know me i always got a few unearthly palettes to talk about so let's just talk about the unearthly palettes now i think i got a few blend bunny palettes to talk about not blend bunny um blend bunny palettes to talk about well and i think a couple of ace Butane, so we halfway through the box girl we halfway through the box let's get into these unearthly cosmetics palettes so these are the palettes that stood out to me the most this year of course i have to start off with the um valentine's day one the sleepover palette 
Love the packaging on this. I think it's stunning. The highlighter from this collection is really bomb as well. The blush didn't do as much as for me as I was hoping, but I love the highlighter from this collection. Random side note. Um, but I love the color story of this palette. Y'all know these are more of my romantic everyday tones that I would wear. The only thing I don't like is the sequin shade, but I've never touched it. It's not that big a deal. Um, and since these are the ones you can pop out of, like if I get a palette from my hair, like eventually that pops out, I can just pop out that shade and put something else there. So that's why I'm fine with it because overall, the majority of the palette I like it. And if it's only one shade I don't like out of an entire palette, I don't think that's cause to um disowner to put it aside i like to use this as a companion palette a lot with other palettes as well like when i'll be doing a little more neutral um pinkish tone look and i want an extra pop like i'll go into this shade or i'll go into this shade and make sure i use those to give that look the extra oomph i was looking for because sometimes neutral palettes are just that more um neutral versions of shades like more like this and i like more of this and this which is why i liked her um palette more like i would go into the um the Patrick Tower I showed y'all earlier and then like take the matte shades from here and then take the gorgeous shimmers out of that palette and maybe use like um the um cream shades or something like that so really like that next I have the So Strange palette this was my favorite Halloween palette out of all the ones she came out with the Glamorous was my favorite but y'all saw that in the worst of and you heard the story when I did the video on these so that's why it's not here um this is what this one looks like on the inside I think it's stunning the 1964 palette actually surprised me I liked it a lot too but I reached for this one more than I reached for that one because of obvious reasons this color story is everything you got the um green and pink and then you got the sunset eye toward the bottom and then you got these cool um set of grays that you use i guess to make a more neutral look because you can use the green and then use this as a neutral look and then you can use the greens and the pinks and make this a nice look so i like the way she designed and set up the color story of this and um i like this one the best out of all the ones i tried from the halloween collection so i had to make sure i put it in this video then we have the all i ever wanted volume two i told you i used this i have actually used this Quite a bit i use way more than i use the first one but i think it's because it's really similar to the danessa myers one and i had to give y'all video showing you that it was similar to the danessa myers plus this came out when the primal one came out so i was using it more with the primal palette because it has the unique um shimmery tones in it that the primal palette doesn't have it just has um metallics in it and the metallics in there are really nice but you know like when you want that extra oomph i would just dig into this palette along with the colorful mattes in that palette and have a match made in heaven so this one has been used by me quite a bit this year and it is um, well deserved to be in this video. The last one I have to talk about. This is probably like my worst, most used unearthly cosmetics palette this year. I was loving this palette. I love the tones in it. I love the way it's laid out. I just think it's wonderful. This is a Vitality palette. If y'all remember, I was talking crap when I first used it too because I was talking about how hard pressed it was in the pan. I felt like some of the shades were hard pressed in the pan though, but I still managed to make them work and managed to make gorgeous looks at them. Y'all know I love this blue purple section. Then there's like a green section with all different tones of greens and some fun pops of yellow. And then you have more of this sunset -y like um various tone valentine's day eyelids you can use so to me this is the sunset section this is like the green lover section with different tones of green and you have the blue and purple for me so it's like the green blue and purple were the ones i cared about the most but i made great eye looks with all of them and i think they all um worked well i've done at least four or five looks with this palette and y'all know again with as much eyeshadows i have because we going through quite a bit of stacks of eyeshadows right now the fact that i'm winning that palette four or five times i feel like tells me everything you need to know that is literally one of my all-time favorite unearthly cosmetics palettes Easily. Um, let's see. One. Mm. Thought I had more than one HBK palette, but I forgot. Like the, I had to do honorable mentions for the other one, and then the one I was gonna put in this video, I think I had already um used. So um, wait, no. Sorry, no, I do have a couple of HBK palettes. My bad. So I have the Ambiance palette and the Palette Opposite palette. Honey, I used the crap out of this Palette Opposite palette. I've done at least three or four looks with this palette. I love this one just as much as I love the Vitality one from um, Unearthly Cosmetics. Only thing is the shades in these palettes break so easily to me because my pink one in here broke. Y'all know my Tropical Vibes palette showed up to be broken. So I don't know what's going on with the formula of these. But it's like I'm going to need these shades not to be breaking on me because, you know, like I like the palettes. I like the formula change. I like the quality. But it's like I, I need the, the shade to actually stay in the pants. So I'm going to need them to stop breaking. That's the only issue I've been having with these palettes recently is mine like to keep breaking and I don't like that. But I love this palette. Like I bought mine as just the palette though when they launched it. It's just the palette the limited supply they had. Otherwise you have to buy it with the game. And I wasn't keen on having the game which is why y'all didn't get the review when it first came out. Because I was like I don't want to play the game. I don't want to buy the game. And I know if I buy it with the game you're going to expect me to do it and girl me in one of them. 
you know, but I just, I don't have time for all that. I barely have time to make these videos. Like right now, I'm over here like, oh. But then I have the Almonds palette. If you are looking for a dupe to the Good Sport palette from ColourPop, honey, here it is. Now, we've been waiting at least two years for ColourPop to bring Good Sport back, and they didn't. But HU Tape was like, okay, it's okay, we got you. I had done a look that you'll see in the future comparing this to the Good Sport palette, and honey, that's all I'm going to say, honey. But to me, this is a great alternative to the Good Sport palette. Now, obviously, it's going to cost more than the Good Sport palette. I think this palette is $38.99. But you can use the Influencer code. Y'all know the drill. Use code Cage Makeup, honey. Because I don't think my code works anymore. So, <laughs> use code Cage Makeup. And you can go ahead and hook yourself up with this palette. It is stunning. It has the perfect amount of grungy fallness going on to it. And I absolutely love it. I will definitely be using it a whole lot more. Because it's simply sunny. Whenever I feel a good sport vibes coming on, I'm going to just pick it up and grab it and do a look. Now, let's get into... Is this the only palette I have from them? Really? Okay, we're going to do some more one-off um, palettes now. So, I have the Mel's Memory Bundle from um, Sydney Grace. If y'all remember, she had made her version of what she thought Retrogram was going to look like. One, I mean, Retro was going to look like once... Um, the retro palette came out and City Grace took her bundle and made it into a um, collection. So I much prefer males. I have actually used males way more than I have used the Natasha Denona Retro Glam palette just because male gave a good variety of shades for everyone. I feel like there's enough depth and enough light and enough in between shades of green and pink for me to be able to use this palette so in the capacity I would like without looking ashy so I much prefer males over the Natasha Denona one I do own the Natasha Denona one and gave y'all a video on it because I do make lots of Natasha Denona content because this is a luxury makeup channel so I have it I'm not necessarily crazy about it though if I had to reach for anything I'm gonna reach for males I've used males at least three or four times again y'all notice that's a trend if I use it three or four times it's most likely gonna be in this video because it's like y'all see how many palettes I'm just talking about that are my favorites that I used three or four times as compared to watching my eyeshadow palette collection video so y'all know i have wiped the collection so the fact that i went out my way to reach for these i feel like should tell you everything you need to know so next this palette when i first tried it i wasn't crazy about it i still think it's um i'm still not as, as crazy about it as everyone else is but i do think it's good enough to be in this video especially for the price point and the um the color story alone this is this serenity palette from cosmic brushes so this is what she looks like on the inside. I've done about two or three looks with this palette to kind of get more of a feel for it. I love the color story of it. I love the formula of it. It's not like out of this world, but for its price point, I definitely think it's good. It's up there with the um, Beauty Bay formula, and it's got the Beauty Bay price to go along with it too. So I really like it in that regard. The only thing is I'll say be prepared to wait for the shipping on this because the shipping takes quite a while on this because it is a foreign brand. But otherwise, I think the quality of the palette is good. I think the color story is nice, and if you want an alternative... For the Michaela palette, I feel like this would be good for that, especially with the price point. But you can buy the Michaela palette at um, CVS and use a coupon and get it for like 20 bucks. I told y'all about that before. So, there's that. Anyway, let's get into the rest of these palettes, girl, because there's still more palettes to go. Jesus. Okay, so, I got a couple more runoff palettes to do, and then we're going to get into some more groupings, and then we're going to end with the random runoffs that I have left behind. Okay. So next I have the Sorcerer Palette from um, Fantasy Cosmetica. This is my favorite palette from the brand. Like, I, But then again, like this is my color story. The only shade I don't like is this one down here. I literally have used every shade in here multiple times. I have used this palette multiple times. I love this palette. I love this color story. I think the owner did an excellent job with this. And I can't wait to see what else she has to come in 2023. She came out with three palettes this year. There's the Druid Palette. I know that's the one Beijing really likes. Um, and then there's the Barb palette. I wasn't crazy about that one because that's not more of my color aesthetic or story. But this one right here hit the nail on the head for me. I was like, yes, girl, give it to me. Uh, sh shut up and take my money now. I will buy it. Give it to me. And then I have, of course, my Juvia's Place Culture palette. I have used this palette quite a few times as well because I really love the color story of it. I mean, it's simply stunning. Look at that. It's just, it's just stunning. It, to me, it's a black girl friendly version of the Michaela palette. The Michaela on um, the original palette because I feel like it has a lot of the similar tones in it. I'm actually doing a battle comparing it to um, that one. It's part of the new series I'm doing in 2023, so you have to wait and see how that goes. But um, I feel like this is a good alternative to the Michaela palette. So if you don't find the Michaela palette at TJ Maxx and you don't want to pay the full price for the Michaela palette on the um, Glam Light website, you can go ahead and hook up this one. Y'all know Juice Place is always having a sale, so honey, go ahead and grab this because it's going to be quite the steal. Who's texting me? 
Oh, my mom, apparently. Let's see what she wants. I got a package, apparently. I hope it's not the Glam Light package. Y'all, I already put, um, put up all my stuff, and I'm going to be pissed about it. Okay, so now let's get into some um, grouped palettes. So I have the collection from Kaleidos that came out this year. These are the little quads they came out with. I forgot what kind of night it was. It's something night. I forgot the exact name of the collection, but I have Glowing Iris and Flowing Haze. So um, Glowing Iris is my favorite one, but I feel like y'all know why. I mean, look at this purple little quad. This is perfect for when you need to um, get out the house quick. You want to do a nice little look, but you're a colorful queen like I am. You're not into like the neutralness of it all. I feel like this is purple for that, perfect for that because you can just dust this over your brow bone. You can put this on your outer V. You can put this shimmer on the lid. And you can run this on your lower lash line and get out the door in a timely fashion. So I hate the fact that they have this little thing in there telling you what to use where. It's like, don't tell me where to use anything. Like... That's why I still don't own the Glam Palette from Natasha Nolan to this day. Don't tell me where to put stuff, girl. I put it where the hell I feel like I paid for this, not you. Next, I have the Flowing Haze Palette. Again, this is another one that people will probably do more for that everyday look I was talking about. I feel like the purple one is supposed to be more of a smoky night out. And this one's supposed to be more for your everyday. Because these are the type of everyday neutral tones I would use if I was more into neutrals. Again, you got this. You can dust on the outer V. You can dust this in your crease. I mean, you can dust this. As your transitioning shade, you can dust this one into your crease. And then you have this dual chroming shimmer shade that you put in your inner corner and your lid. And just have a nice little on-the-go look. So I have used the purple one more than I use this, but I like the collection as a whole. So that's why I just went ahead and put both of them in there. Because I think I've used at least of those, both of those at least a couple of times. What else we got next? Um, next, we got some Glam Light palettes. So these are the two Glam Light palettes I've been reaching for the most Throughout the year, this is the Glam Light X Michaela Pot 2 palette, of course. And then I have the Barbie palette. I always feel like the Barbie palette is um, a great um, representation for all skin tones to feel like they belong as a Barbie. Because I feel like a lot of times when you see Barbie, you just see it as, um, you know, this Barbie here. So I like the fact that she included all skin tones to be Barbies. You got the black Barbie. You got the um medium tone barbie and then you have the traditional barbie i think it was important that she did that um to inspire all girls and let all girls know that you can be a barbie barbie isn't just made for the classic skin tone that they portray her in and the, the story that went behind um her in the barbie collection i thought was really nice as well plus you have to think she has a daughter so she wants her to be included as well so i really just like the way she went about this barbie and with the packaging i know some people don't like it but it's like i like it just fine because I, as a parent, realize what she's doing and how she's trying to encourage and, um, you know, push people. So, I, I mean, I, I really like that. And that's why I always speak about it whenever I show this palette. The color story of this is stunning as well. You have this, like, little neutral um, part right here. And then you have, like, the blue and purple, which I love. And then you have a nice little pink and purple section. So, I feel like it's a great transition because you can do a neutral look with a pop of blue or pink or or purple or you can just do a nice little pink and purple look so I feel like she curated this palette very nicely and this is like easily one of my favorite ones and this is one of the ones I used most this year but we all know I use the Michaela one more than I use that one just because Michaela just touched my soul with this palette like she it's like you know if I had to create a palette and I haven't said this since the Mega by Shayla X Colourpop collab came out but if I had to make a palette honey it would be most likely something like this because I mean I got my blues, I got my greens, I got my purples, and I got all these shades that you can use to transition over those shades with the airbrush pastel shades. And then you got your mid-tone shades to put in the crease, and then you got your deeper shade for the outer V. And then you can use some of the lighter shades to run on the lower lash line. I feel like she did a tremendous job with this palette. I mean, it's just stunning and absolutely wonderful. I'm like, yes, yes, a thousand times less. I absolutely love this palette, and I'm so happy to have it in my collection. And I feel like the quality on that one is a million times better than the first one. Because I was not a huge fan of the first palette. I mean, I've learned to work with it and it's fine. It was not ever like it was really bad. But just compared to that one, that one just knocked it out of the park. Chef's Kiss, absolutely love it. So the last grouping of palettes I have to talk about is from Utenzai. So of course y'all know, I'm sorry that everything I'm holding my hands in is edition. I hope you got your hands on it when you wanted to. Angie told y'all that her palette was leaving after Black Friday, so you should have got your hands on it. With these, I mean, I know we weren't expecting them to just be limited edition and not come back. But you know, um, they said they on that milk tip this year. Like, they came out with it. You should have grabbed it. You didn't grab it. That's not their business. So, 
I don't know what to tell you. But um, yeah, so this is the Hella palette. This is the Angie's palette with um Uden's eye. Y'all see, I still got in the background from when Tina had her palette with Uden's eye. I don't plan on taking it down anytime soon, so it's just gonna be there. I'm sure y'all used to Tina being there by now, saying hi, looking sexy in her um photo and all that. So you know, you're used to it. It's fine. But um. This is Angie's palette. I think it's gorgeous. I think she did an excellent job with the color story. It gives me AKA vibes when I look at the green and the pink together. I like the tones of greens and pink she chose for you to be able to make multiple looks with. And then I like the fact that she gave you this nice um, grungy roll at the bottom. So if you wanted to make a grungy pink eye, you could. If you want to make a green eye, you can. If you want to make a green and purple eye, you can. I feel like there's just so much you can do with this palette. And then she cured it beautifully. Just like she did with her um, Club Nebula palette. Angie just makes gorgeous color stories. I can't wait to see what her next collab will be and what it's going to look like because, you know, I'm intrigued. I just want them to bring the Kaleidos one back and I'll be, you know, fine. Um, Next, I have the Christmas Eve palette. I feel like this is a grungy lover's dream and it's, like, curated to be somewhat winter appropriate because I feel like people like to wear these iciest blue shades in the wintertime. So I feel like the blues in here go really nice with it and that's just great. And then you have, like, these more earthiest tones to go along with it. So I feel like this is just a beautifully curated palette that can be used year-round. You don't just have to use it for the fall in the winter or just use it during the holiday time so that's what i like about this palette i have used it at least two to three times the next one i have is the merry christmas palette this is what it looks like on the inside again it gave you traditional vibes but still like stuff you can use year round like you have this nice little um warm quad that you can use um in the fall you have this nice little pop of pink and red you can use during like um valentine's day or sweetest day you have um these nice greens that you can just use year round so i feel like even though these are a lot of holiday colors you can use this palette year round just the way in which i described it and it's just giving holiday packaging because they released it during the holiday time but i think these are stunning and i am happy to have them in my collection they put this one to the side because i got a video plan for that some of these things i still got other videos planned for for my future videos of 2023 that i'm coming out with for you all so we down to the last four palettes y'all i swear hopefully we can get done with this go around because i feel like i've been sitting here a good 45 50 minutes just talking about palettes and i'm tired so girl the um we have the new my palette from sigma i love the color story of this one the most this is what i was hoping the patrick ta color story would be like because i feel like it's deep enough in tones to still have some of the purples in it and um it's just a stunning palette. To me, this just gives the everyday vibe feel to me. Like, if I had to have an everyday palette, it would be something like this or the Patrick Ta or the Hood of Beauty New News. Like, these are just the type of tones I gravitate toward when they say neutral or more of, like, a cool tone, if you will. So, um, I was happy to get this in my collection. I think the formula on it is really nice and it's great for an everyday palette if your everyday tones are my everyday tones. So, I've used it uh, at least two or three times because I've had those days when I had to rush to get to work and I would Oh, no! Nah. Y'all that just dropped the whole palette of the palette. It was like Jane. It just all just fell. I'm like, I hope nothing broke in the process. Because all I ever wanted fell over. And you know, those shimmers can be fresh. Oh, thank God. It's fine. Ooh, child. So next, I had the, um, I think my son thought it was a true emergency. And he came in here. And it's just a whole bunch of palettes fell on the floor. Yeah, nothing happened to your mom. Okay, bye. <laughs> so next, I have the Minka palette from Adep Cosmetics. This is like my favorite palette that they came out with this year. Like, do you see this color story? These shimmers in here are absolutely amazing, stunning, and wonderful. And then she gave you these two purple masks to go with all the shimmers that she picked, which I feel like are really nice because they match nice with the dual chromes that she chose. And then the shade right here, Luna, is simply stunning. The only thing is it's one of those putty shades, so you have to, like, work with it. It's kind of finicky with the way you have to work with it, but it, the payoff is definitely worth it, in my personal opinion. But y'all know Adept can do no wrong when it comes to shimmers. I feel like they have one of the best shimmer formulas on the market right now. I just wish they would give a little bit more mattes in each palette. But you know, since I have like the Blend Bunnies palette and I have a lot of um, matte palettes, it's not that big a deal for me to have it. That's why I'm okay with it. Do y'all see how the palettes just fell on the floor? Like it's a whole little line. Let's see. All those are stacked on top of each other. They just fell. But anyway, loving this palette and so glad that I got it in a timely fashion because i had oh, y'all know the story but on my son's birthday i ordered it and it didn't work out for me sorry i tried to order and it didn't work out for me so next i have the dragon fruit palette from cleonid cosmetics and um, emily violet marie this is my first time ever trying this brand because the singles are always sold out from the stained glass collection so when i found out they were having a palette i was like yes give it to me give it to me now i've been wanting to try this brand forever and they finally have a palette that i can try it in give it to me now 
and they did not disappoint. The shimmers in here are wonderful. The matte, I mean, not the mattes, the satins in here that you're supposed to be able to use. The matte shades are wonderful. Y'all saw the look I gave with it. It was stunning. I gave more of a berryish look with green, so it's like a pink greenish type vibe i love the shimmers in here i will definitely buy more stuff from this brand i wish they would come up with more palettes but you know i guess the last one i have to talk about is mother pat y'all knew this was gonna be in here how long have we asked this woman for colorful mats how long and the fact she finally gave it to us honey this is easily my favorite pat McGrath palette of all time just because she finally gave me the colorful mats i asked her for child look at it look at it it's beautiful and it is my most used pat mcgrath palette by far I was gonna put the moon, um, the the the, uh, the mothership tin in here, but I was like, I'd rather have this one in here, obviously, just because you know, like I said, the color aesthetic is so beautiful. Like I love how she set it up in quad format and showed you in the quad format. I feel like this is actually um, a less fun version of the Vitality palette from um, Unearthly. Now that I think about it, because she has these sort of tones in hers, then she has the blue and purple, and then she has the green. So it's like this. It's kind of set up to look like that, but I feel like hers is the more fun version of the Pat McGrath one. So if you didn't want to pay Pat McGrath prices, I feel like it would be good of you to get the Vitality palette. But this one was on sale for like 62 on, um, what is the four? And then on top of it, they had the 20% off coupon. So you could have got this for probably about the same price as her palette if you wanted to. So, but if you got a chance and you like more fun poppy colors, I feel like it would be a good alternative. Let me just go ahead and show it now since we both sit there. It's here. We here. Everybody. Girl, let me just show it because i showed it against the glamorous palette but i was like now that i'm thinking about it i feel like it should go against this palette as well because this is a more it's really just a more fun version of the pat mcgrath palette so here's what they look like side by side you see what i'm saying like i feel like it's just more fun version because what do you see those oranges and those pinks that's at the top right there she just put her greens in the middle instead of toward the end like mother did mother put the blues and the purple in the middle and then put the greens toward the end but i feel like if you flop them around this is a fun version of the pat mcgrath palette so just FYI, I'm finding dupes even though I'm trying to show y'all um in the year all the stuff I had to talk about. So these are all the paths I had to talk about. Girl, if you stayed, bravo to you. I hope you entered the giveaway that was in the Black Friday side of Monday just because it's Tuesday video. Because that um one doesn't end until January the 2nd. And this video is I'm going up on Christmas Eve. So I hope you entered that because you deserve to win something, girl. Because I've been sitting here talking for like an hour and you actually stayed to the end. So bravo to you. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Remember y'all the dimes. I'm even gonna ask you to comment down below which palette you try to like the best because honey, uh, who could keep up? I need to put chapters in this one. The way Dean puts chapters in her videos just because they child is so long. But um I'll catch you guys in the next one. Be blessed, girl. Bye. Mm.